Hello and welcome to part 8 in this video series on Python and Arduino serial communication. In this video we're going to add an initialization file. This will allow us to store and update values in a text file rather than having to edit the main program. The two values we want to be able to update are the number of rows collected and the number of points per row. These are two key values. So if we'd like to average more points or collect more points, we'll be able to just edit the text file and then therefore edit the main file. We'll also code it generically so we can add in variables if we add new functionality into our main program. Additionally, we'll code it so we can reuse this for other programs. To read the initialization file, we're going to create a module, an external Python file that we're going to pull functions from to use in our main program. In this video, we're going to use one function. That's the get ini function. To retrieve the function we're going to use in the external module, we're going to use the following statement. From ini read import get ini. Once this code is executed, we have now imported get ini and we can use it as if it was defined in our main program. The first line of code calls the function get ini and stores it into ini data. The following two lines of code save the values that were delivered from that function. The two values are read in from a text file and get ini passes a Python data object that is a dictionary. We provide the dictionary the key in order to get the value, which is either num points or num rows collect. It's critical to understand the difference between objects that are lists and objects that are dictionaries. A list is an index sequence. We can access elements within a list by referring to its index. Index start at zero and then increase by the number of elements that remain in that list. To access a specific element within a list, you pass it the index number, which is an integer. In this example, if we pass data the index of 1, we get the value 103. However, a dictionary is a collection of elements, but it's a non-index sequence. Each element has a key and value pair. The key is what identifies the data that you're going to be wanting to use. The key is a string. Each key value pair is separated by a colon. To get access to the value, we need to pass the dictionary the key, which then returns the value. For example, if we pass data the string p2 in this example, we get the value 103. Here are the results of this example in the Python shell. First, data is assigned to be a list of three elements. Then we print out data and access one element within that list. Notice that when we print out data in its full set, it's in order to which we assigned it. This is because it's an indexed sequence. I then reassign data and make it a dictionary. It uses curly brackets and then the key value syntax. Notice when I print out data, it doesn't print out the key value pairs in the order to which I assigned it. It goes P1, P3, P2. Dictionaries are not ordered. However, we can access the elements by using the key. If I pass data P2, then it returns 103. Dictionaries are useful when we don't know how many elements we're going to be using or if we don't want to keep track of the index. This frees us up to access data by key and not by index. Now let's dive into the read INI module. As its name suggests, the goal of this module is to read the INI file. To do this, we need to read the file and then create a format to which we'll use to gather the data that we're trying to initialize. I first open up a file called datasetup.ini and I specify that I want to read from this file. 
I create a dictionary called INI data result. And this is what we're going to ultimately return from the get INI function. Inside the function, we're going to utilize the readLine function split and R strip. We are familiar with the readLine function and the split. We use these when we read in the Arduino's serial data. It's a good idea to create a header for your initialization file. This can usually be a description or can relay some information that's typically different than the variables that are contained within your initialization file. However, in our case, it's going to determine how many variables we're actually going to read in. We'll see that this variable sets up a loop that will allow us to collect multiple initialization variables. The first thing we do to get this header is to assign INI header equal to data file underscore INI dot readline dot split and we pass split in a colon. This colon acts as a delimiter between the variable name and its value. INI header is a list so it's an index sequence. The print in the line below it is just to see what's in this list as a debugging measure, so we print it to the shell. I print the first item in the list at index 0, I concatenate that with a space, and I concatenate it with its value, which is at index 1. To clean up the data formatting, I use the rstrip function. From the Python documentation, rstrip returns a copy of the string with its trailing characters removed. These are either white space characters, new line characters, which is information that we don't need. Now that we have the initialization file header, we need to convert it to an integer. That's what INI read lines does. It's going to set up the preceding for loop, so it needs to be an integer value. This for loop will iterate for the number of times specified by INI read lines and will collect these variables and return them in the format of a dictionary. I use the same protocol as used to get the first INI header as I do to collect the variables themselves. I use a generic variable simply called variable and assign it data file underscore INI read line and split. As a debug measure I print the variable to the shell. We're going to use the INI data result object as a means to pass the information to the main program. This is a dictionary, so we need to assign it a key value pair. The key is going to be the variable name specified in our INI file. When we read in the INI file, we get the variable and its value. This is a list size of two. So to get the variable name, we access the first item in that list. This is the key, and its corresponding value is the second item in the list. We make sure to use rstrip to clean up its formatting. Once again, I utilize the print function, but then I return INI data results. This is how we deliver the information to the main program. To initialize the variables that we're going to use in our program, we simply need to get access to the dictionary that was created from our module. We pass it in the key to get its value. We make sure that the value is the right type, which in this case is an integer, and we assign it to the variable that's going to be used in our main program. I'll demonstrate how we can create more variables and change the program by updating the initialization file. For demonstration purposes, I'll add in two extra variables. I'll add a variable called operator and include someone's name and include the type of measurement that I'm making, which is a voltage measurement. These will be printed to the Python shell, but could be used in the main program if we add code to support them. Also, I'll update the number of variables we want to read in, because I added two to this list, we're going to read in four, and I'll update num points to five, and num rows collect to 50. From the Python shell, you can see all the variables have been updated, or add it in. Opening up the data file, you can see we collected 50 rows of information, 
and there are five points per row. This is what we specified in the INI file. Thank you for watching this video on Python and serial communications. Let me know what you think in the comment section. This code will be posted to GitHub, and I'll provide a link for that in the description.